the Anthill Kids. Leader, Roche Terrier, aka Moses. Years active, 1977 to 1989. Location, Burnt River, Ontario, Canada. Roche Terrier was 30 years old when he founded this doomsday cult. He called himself Moses. Just like any cult leader, he was intelligent and quite charismatic. Terrio started this cult with motivational speeches, preaching equality and unity. As time went on, this peacekeeping mission was forgotten, and he quickly turned controlling and evil when he knew his followers were completely loyal to him. The cult started in Quebec, then moved to the Quebec wilderness in 1979. They later moved to the province of Ontario, close to Burnt River, where they would eventually call their new home. The dates for the relocation to Ontario are confusing, somewhere between 1984 and 1987. Roche's beliefs were similar to the Seventh-day Adventist, which he was kicked out of previously. Terrio believed the world was going to end. He shared with the members that God warned him the end of the world would come sometime in February 1979. He packed up the commune and moved them to a place where they would be saved from the apocalypse. He ordered the members to build a town in the mountainside in St. Jogues for them to live in. This is where the cult name came from. The hard work they did resembled worker ants. When the world didn't end, the members were quite unsure of Terrio. When the members started to doubt him, he reassured them it was just a miscalculation. They continued to idolize Roche and believed he would save them. The original followers of the cult consisted of 12 adults and 22 children. They all lived together in a commune under his control. To increase numbers, he had several wives and had children with all nine female members. He fathered 26 children. He did claim impregnating them was a religious requirement. Eventually, there were almost 40 members in the group in the 80s. Members of this cult suffered extreme physical and sexual abuse. Terrio had a drinking problem that heightened over time, which is quite ironic considering drinking alcohol was frowned upon in the religion he based this cult on. It was said that the alcoholism caused his beliefs and rules to become insanely twisted. He incited fear in the members. At one point, Roche tried to reinstate the previous mission of the cult, but continued to stand by the punishment as a way to purify the followers. They were purified by being whipped and beaten. He always kept an eye on the members without them knowing, to make sure they were following the rules. He knew he had complete control over the members. They usually did whatever he told them without hesitation. However, physical punishments were inflicted on members who he felt were being unfaithful. He would hit them with some form of weapon. Members who wanted to leave would face a crueler form of punishment. This included being suspended from the ceiling, defecating on them, and other forms of torture. A source of income for the cult was earning money selling baked goods. Members who did not contribute enough to the funds were punished as well. He always told them God was watching, and God would tell Roche everything. The members of the commune were not permitted to speak to anyone in the outside world. They were cut off from communication to their families very early on. Members were not allowed to speak to each other without Terrio present. They were not allowed to have sex with each other without his permission. Followers were not able to see a doctor, so Terrio conducted all medical procedures. He performed surgeries to show his healing powers as a holy being. As you can probably tell, he was not a holy being, nor had any medical knowledge. He butchered the members by executing circumcisions on all the followers, 
pumping an ethanol solution into their stomachs, and any other procedure he saw fit. He killed a few members, one child during a circumcision gone wrong, and a newborn baby froze to death outside. He killed Solange Boylan during a sadistic procedure stemming from a complaint of an upset stomach. With no anesthesia or proper equipment, Terio started punching her in the stomach and giving her an enema with olive oil. He proceeded to cut open her stomach, tear out her intestines, then made a bystander stitch her up when he was finished. He attempted to intubate her. A woman was ordered to blow air into the tube that was shoved down Solange's throat in an attempt to keep her alive. The attempt was obviously not successful, but this gave Moses a chance to show off his prophetic powers. How he tried to resurrect Solange was very disturbing. He drilled a hole in her head, then had each man in the commune ejaculate into the hole. The resurrection did not work. Some gruesome details of the abuse that took place are as follows making them break their own legs with sledgehammers, shooting each other, eating dead rodents, eating feces, pulling out teeth and nails, cutting off the other followers' toes to prove loyalty. The children were not left out of the torture. The children were sexually abused, nailed to trees, while the other kids threw stones at them, and likely in more ways that we may never know. The commune was registered as a church. This prevented authorities investigating the cult. The only thing they could do was make sure the children were safe. Eventually, social workers saved 17 of the children in 1987. Gabrielle Lavallee came forward and shared the heinous acts of Roche Terrier. She did try to escape, but still had dependency on the cult and went back. Before the first attempt to leave, she had already experienced a needle breaking off in her spine, the removal of several teeth, and a blowtorch held to her genitals. When she came back to the cult, her punishment was removal of a finger and nailing a hand to a table and having her arm amputated. She took the punishment and stayed for a bit longer. She made the decision to leave for good in 1989 when he started to amputate part of her breasts and smashing her head in with an axe. She fled and contacted authorities and got help for the others. Terrio was arrested for assault in 1989 for amputating Gabrielle's arm, which disbanded most of the Ant Hill kids. However, during his 12 year sentence for the assault, he had four more children with the members that stuck by him during their conjugal visits. Gabrielle gave the police enough information to investigate Terrio for the murder of Solange. He was later convicted for murder in 1993 for the death of Solange Boylan, with a life sentence in prison on top of his previous sentences. He was denied parole in 1999. At 63 years old, Roche Terrio was murdered in prison by his cellmate in 2011. The cellmate brought the knife to the guards and said, that piece of shit is down on the range. Here's the knife. I've sliced him up. The cult was devised from the mind of a sick sadist who wanted nothing more than to control and torture his followers. Terrio was an egotistical, insane man with a god complex. His followers trusted him giving him the power he so desperately craved. The abuse these people went through was harrowing, and it is devastating to know they may never recover from such trauma. May all his victims rest in peace, and may the survivors be able to live a normal and happy life. Thank you for listening. If you like what you heard, consider subscribing, or check out another episode or series. Check out the description box for the reference list and links, and if you'd like a story narrated, 
check me out on Twitter, which is also in the description below.